Come, Lord Jesus, and bless the images that are about to enter our minds and our hearts and affect us in the way we live and move and have our being. Amen. Hi friends, relatives in Christ, and welcome to this time of meditation on Palm Sunday as we begin Holy Week together. I would imagine some of you have been to church by the time you take a few moments to look at this video and share it with me, and some of you may not be going at all. Um, I just hope and pray that you are blessed by entering into this sacred space. One thing that's going to be different, and I hope inspirational for you today, is that I am going to do the meditation before the reading. And I think by the time I get to the end of my short meditation, that you will understand why. So let's begin. In the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My friends, even for those who are familiar with Palm Sunday, it's easy to understand why some find the story a bit of a confusing overload. <laughs> um, the story is set, as you might know, with Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. Uh, it's a joyful time for those in his time who ran out into the street. Palms were waved and spread to welcome Jesus as a royal visitor. They were a sign of his royalty, of his high status. He was elevated and acclaimed with the words, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of Yahweh, the Lord. He was, in their opinion, the one from God. Many thought of him as Messiah. At that time, they were also remembering something else too, in the midst of all the joy and pomp, that he was the one to fulfill a prophecy told a long time ago of one who would be on an ass's colt, a donkey, that would be the sign of the one who was to deliver the nation and restore the fortunes of Israel. A little bit of history there for you. I've always felt, too, that there were some in the crowd that really did understand what Jesus was all about, but the narrative tells us, really, they didn't. We view, you and I, Palm Sunday, from our perspectives, don't we? Our perspectives of tradition, the years of sermons, the, the years of teaching about this, and the palms and the crosses that we, that we share. But we also know how the story works out. This conqueror, this deliverer, was about to die a shameful, cruel, painful death. And that's why on Palm Sunday, we always read what we call the passion narrative. We need to get the whole message of love, the whole message of the story. In short, Jesus' deliverance was not going to come to the people through some military conquest. The deliverance was coming through something quite unexpected. It was to show that everyone was going to be delivered in God's time by the power of God's love. And it was made evident by the willingness of Jesus, the creator of God, to prove by emptying himself that love was real and eventually we will understand the power of love palm sunday 
sets the stage for the time when the Lord left us with the greatest teachings. Anger won't work. Impatience won't work. Religion won't work. Institutions do not have all the answers. Institutions will not work. Love will work. Love will always work. It will always work. Palm Sunday is much more than an invitation for us to wave palms and use other symbols that show the world that we have arrived at a holy place and have all the answers. Palm Sunday is an invitation for you and I to meditate on the power of love. So let's apply that to our lives. You know, I've been doing a lot of thinking, as most of you have, about what's happened and what is yet to happen because of the shadowy places and corners that COVID has driven us into. Let me start here. I found myself saying to folks as I move about uh, the diocese and, and wherever I am, often this is why I say, you know, we haven't yet seen the fallout of what is going to happen to us because of COVID. We haven't seen yet how COVID is going to affect relationships in our society, in our families, in the communities that we are part of, and in the church. And we talk about the amount of money that the government has spent. We talk about the anger and the disconnect that's taken place between friends and families and, and how often people are just angry and frustrated and not listening and impatient. And you know, when I say these things, I always get a nod and say, yes, me too. I wonder what it's going to be like down the road next year and the year after because of this and how we've responded to it. One thing we all seem to agree on, we just don't know. And we also agree on the fact that we need something. There are days when I feel so burdened. I'm being honest with you, so sorry for the ways that I have been misrepresented and the ways that that's been my fault too. And so I ask Jesus to help me. Think about this. Jesus rode a donkey into the marketplace. In his time, the marketplace, the Agora, was a place where people gathered to buy and sell, to share stories and food, to laugh and to cry to plot and to steal, to satisfy the cost of being religious, to stand out in the crowd. The marketplaces where people looked for companions, searched for healing, and it's also a place where we found people trying to self-justify and strike out. Jesus rode into the midst of all of this in his time to bring into their lives the profound and shocking example of love. He's entered the marketplace today, the marketplace where you and I gather. And you know, it's just as busy and convoluted as it was in his historical time. We live in a marketplace where some of us don't know how much more we can take. We live in a bewildering time and for many of us, our interior lives are a tangle of soul and mind. A time of fear and longing, anger, regret. Add your own phrase. We hardly know what to say anymore or how to say it. We want to be heard, but we don't want to listen. We try to listen but we find somehow we're just not able to do it. And when we do hear, what we hear seems to be interpreted through this veil of confusion that I've just referred to. So friends, as we meditate today on the power of love, what Palm Sunday was all about, let's ask Jesus to fill us with a holy reminder of his purpose and his presence. 
We are in the marketplace, friends. We are. It's loud there. This wonderful and terrible place. Wherever you are, wherever you live, is the marketplace. This wonderful and terrible place where conversations turn to shouting. They easily shift from intention to anger. And civility is cast away and replaced with anger. We're in stores. If we don't say hi, we don't smile, even behind a mask. And we don't meet each other's eyes anymore. We need some help, don't we? We need healing. We need to be restored. Let's ask Jesus to help us. Listen. Hear. Share. Trust. Forgive. In the language of love. Let us ask his blessing. My friends, in all the language and human energy that surrounds you this Holy Week and beyond, the language that comes from you, the language that comes towards you, about you, the language that surrounds you in the marketplace, the language that is close to you, intended for you, misunderstood by you, may all the language and human energy that surrounds you this week be touched by the grace of the one who died for love of each of us. May we each be admonished, supported, and nurtured by language that tells the truth, language that offers hope. May our language of hearing and sharing become language that is good enough, that accomplishes its purpose, because we too, like Jesus, choose love. Amen. Now let us listen to the Palm Sunday reading. And as you do, know that you have been prayed for, so that the images of this reading Fill your life with inspiration and healing and hope. It is read for us by David Suchet, and it is from the New International Version. Luke chapter 23 Then the whole assembly rose and led him off to Pilate, and they began to accuse him, saying, We have found this man subverting our nation. He opposes payment of taxes to Caesar and claims to be Messiah, a king. So Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. Then Pilate announced to the chief priests and the crowd, I find no basis for a charge against this man. But they insisted, he stirs up the people all over Judea by his teaching. He started in Galilee and has come all the way here. On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean. When he learned that Jesus was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was greatly pleased, because for a long time he had been wanting to see him. From what he had heard about him, he hoped to see him perform a sign of some sort. He plied him with many questions, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the teachers of the law were standing there, vehemently accusing him. Then Herod and his soldiers ridiculed and mocked him. Dressing him in an elegant robe, they sent him back to Pilate. That day, Herod and Pilate became friends. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate called together the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was inciting the people to rebellion. I have examined him in your presence, and have found no basis for your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. As you can see, he has done nothing to deserve death. Therefore, I will punish him, and then release him. But the whole crowd shouted, Away with this man! Release Barabbas to us! 
and Barabbas had been thrown into prison for an insurrection in the city and for murder. Wanting to release Jesus, Pilate appealed to them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! For the third time he spoke to them, Why? What crime has this man committed? I have found in him no grounds for the death penalty. Therefore I will have him punished and then release him. But with loud shouts they insistently demanded that he be crucified and their shouts prevailed. So Pilate decided to grant their demand. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, the one they asked for, and surrendered Jesus to their will. As the soldiers led him away, they seized Simon from Cyrene, who was on his way in from the country, and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large number of people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed for him. Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when you will say, Blessed are the childless women, the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if people do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing and they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others, let him save himself, if he's God's Messiah, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us! But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence. We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, for the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness this sight saw what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. But all those who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Shall we pray? Let's pray for our interior lives. Lord, your Son rode through the streets into a marketplace. He rode into the marketplace to a triumphant waha. Now may we who have heard the story in our time seek to welcome you as well into our hearts. Lord, we need your help to do this because we all need healing and forgiveness. We need help to emerge from dark places. Lord Jesus, help us follow you 
give us strength, restore our peace. Take us from death to resurrection, from darkness to light. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world. Creator, help us turn with love to challenge all corruption, all greed, all selfishness, all failure to treat other human beings with the loving kindness, sacrifice, and respect that Jesus showed us. We pray for our hospitals, our homes and institutions, every place where people are in need of release and healing. We pray for those who have been treated with contempt by us as individuals in the institutions that have been called to serve them. And we pray because we too have treated people with contempt. We ask for forgiveness and we ask for mercy to flow into every life. Shall we pray for healing? Lord, we pray for all who have been wounded where those in authority have abused the trust placed in them. We pray for those who are vulnerable, for those who grieve, and for victims and perpetrators of anger and violence. We pray against all that separates us, and we beg mercy, forgiveness, healing, and reconciliation. Lord, give us grace this week to follow in your Son's path, from death to resurrection, from darkness to light. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Now, my friends, may his peace, which passes all human understanding, abide in your hearts, discover you, transform you, and hold you forever. May his peace make the language of this world understandable and clear. May your hearts sing with love because of Christ. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you always. <laughs>